the biggest ballot result of any union in recent times. And so the results were declared on a live social media feed. It was a majority over 90%, 90.44% voted for strike, with a threshold busting turnout of 53.27%. It's an amazing result. You bring all of those things, do you, to school? So why did so many of those teachers who voted, more than 90%, opt to strike? Many had a 5% pay rise last year, but they argue it represents a pay cut because of the rate of inflation. The teaching unions argue that this isn't just about pay. As with other public sector disputes, they say it's about a lack of investment, about cuts to funding, about teacher shortages. They'll be hoping they have the backing of parents in what they describe as a campaign to save our schools. Victor Appiah's son is in year 11, about to take his GCSEs. I want him to... You want him to do well, yeah, of course. I'm going crazy. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what I'm going to do <laughs> You now. don't want any more strikes? No, 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 no. I'm just playing. They can sort things out so the teachers will go to the classroom and teach the, the, the children. Because if, if they go to strike, I don't know what the children are going to do. Everything's going up. Um, and people need to live at the end of the day. So I just hope that they can find a resolution, though. Will know. it be difficult for you as a parent if they do go on strike? Absolutely. Both my wife and I work full time, um, so it would be. But I, on, on the same night, I can understand where they're coming from. You know, everybody's in the same boat. What do you think about the strikes? Not good. After COVID, um, this, that's the last thing we need. They're just going back into school, into routine. So, yeah, I don't want no strikes, <laughs> especially being working mum as well difficult as it is finding childcare. And it's because of the disruption caused by Covid and the fraught memory of having to home school that has led to criticism, with the government calling today's announcement deeply disappointing. It's only one union that has voted to go on strike and uh, it's really disappointing with only 53% of their members actually responding. Um, but it is deeply disappointing for parents and children. And of course it will have an impact, it will have an impact on children's education. Sheena Wheatley has been teaching for 35 years and is now an NEU rep. The government would argue that it just can't afford this pay rise. It's a question of priorities. If you want a, a, a top-class education system, which is what brings people into um, the education service, then you need to uh, pay them in a way which shows that you value the investment in the future of our young people. It shouldn't be ever the case that somebody who is a specialist support teacher for children with special educational needs should find themselves better paid in um, a supermarket. The government will now have to deal with disruption across most of the UK. In Scotland today, teachers started 16 days of action. In England and Wales, the strikes will begin on the 1st of February, with three days of national action and four further days of regional action, which won't affect all areas. Meanwhile, the head teachers' union, the NAHT, has voted to strike in Wales, but may re-ballot their members in England after they failed to reach the required 50% turnout, partly, they say, because they had to hold a postal ballot during the postal strike. Darshan Sonny reporting. Well, joining me now is Mary Bowster, Joint General Secretary of the National Education Union, and Sarah Zelezniov, co-head teacher at School 360 in Stratford, East London, a member of the Big Education Group of Schools. Thank you, both of you, for coming into the studio. Mary Bowster, let me start with you. After two years on and off of lockdowns and online schooling and the misery that meant for parents and pupils, what do you say to them today? I say that we don't want to take this action and we wouldn't be taking it unless the members were desperate. Um, Gillian Keegan talks about 53% turnout. We did this ballot during the postal strike. Uh, the ballot thresholds were designed never to be achieved. The fact we've got over half the members voting and over 90% of those who voted voting yes to strike action. That's um, over 120,000 teachers voting to take action. That shows just how determined that they are. And to be clear, you want 10% more pay. The government was offering you 5% originally? We want, uh, we were uh, last term asking for a 12% pay rise to match uh, inflation. Right. The government, for most experienced teachers, is offered 5%. Okay. Um, well, the House awarded them 5%. It's, oh. this, it is... Okay. The money's being given, yeah.
Um, Sarah, uh, you run a primary school in East London. Can this school stay open with this strike? It'll be very unlikely. Um, I think, you know, we've got a huge number of people who are really struggling um, in terms of pay and managing workload at the moment. People are very unhappy in schools and I think most of the, the staff in our schools um, will want to strike and it will be very difficult to open. Have you spoken to the parents today? Uh, we haven't yet, no. We're waiting right. for the outcome. They'll be very disappointed, right? They all... They may be disappointed, but I think there's actually, and you saw this in the clip there, there's a lot of sympathy for teachers and what they're facing at the moment. I mean, you know, for other unions, there's a minimum service requirement. Is there such a thing with, with, in your school? Um, uh, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a minimum number of people that we have to have on site in order to meet pupil-teacher um, ratios. Um, and it's unlikely, given the numbers that are unhappy, that we'd be able to meet that. And Sarah, if there had not been a postal strike, I mean, this is the supreme irony of all this, and you had been able to get the quorum to have a vote, do you think you would also voted? Well, for a I strike? actually didn't receive a ballot paper myself. Um, but yeah. What would you have done? I, I mean, I, I'd have to really seriously consider it. But I, but I have to say, things are very, very difficult in schools at the moment and the announcements that the government is making about what they want their next steps to be are just not living up to the expectations and what's mm. needed in the system. We're, we're facing a perfect storm. Right. We've got massive mental health crisis. We've got really low attendance because of illness, spiraling illnesses. We've got a lack of support for SEND pupils, for special needs pupils. We've got social care mm. falling apart at the seams and all of those things fall back onto schools. So teachers' workload mm. is going up and teachers are struggling to live in their local area. Mary Bowsted, I can see that this would have been a very difficult decision for many teachers, but the Children's Commissioner, you know, the, the woman who speaks for kids in this country, she has said she's bitterly disappointed by this. I wish she had been bitterly disappointed by the growing crisis in our schools. I wish Rachel D'Souza was bitterly disappointed that the government only just meet, met over 60% of its teacher training targets last year, and this year is looking to do even worse than that. I wish she was bitterly disappointed about the number of lessons being taught by non-subject specialists, mm. one in eight maths lessons. So this I, is a legacy to some extent of the austerity politics that started back in 2010? Hugely. I mean, schools are on their knees now mm. because of decisions made by the government over the last 12 years, mm. by the increasing uh, problem that schools are having recruiting. And, and if we're going to quote, quote other people, let me quote Amanda Spielman, who is the mm. chief inspector of schools, the chief inspector of Ofsted. She wrote in her annual report in December that schools are facing a staffing crisis mm. and that children and young people are bearing the brunt of that. Mm. Um, and so, uh, you but know, it's this going is, to get this... even worse for, for those pupils and for those parents. Right? Well, it, well uh, in the end, you can carry on carrying on and it gets worse and worse and it's hidden. Or, in the end, you have to stand up and mm. say, we cannot continue any longer with teachers losing 23% in real terms mm. of their salary over 12 years. We can't carry on with teachers working the most unpaid overtime mm. of any profession. We can't carry on with local authority services being the central government grant being cut by 40%, leaving teachers not only having to teach, but to be trying to hold up communities and societies who've been left behind by all the services which should be there. Now, as this strike starts, and it might grind on for months, we don't know, the inflation numbers are actually coming down a bit, aren't they? I mean, on, on petrol and on gas prices and so on, that's coming down. So at the end of the day, your time and I might actually work against you in your case. Well, there is the immediate cost of living crisis, but this dispute is not just about this year, it's about a long-term 12-year decline in teacher pay. I went to the Nuffield and the NFER seminar today. Mm. Research is showing graphically the long-term decline in teacher pay okay. relevant to other professions. Sarah, final, very briefly from you, what will you tell your kids tomorrow morning? The kids. Uh I mean, um, what's important to us is that the children are happy and the children are well taught. Mm. Everyone wants that, all yeah. teachers want that. But we need to have the right number of teachers paid at the right, right level in order for them to take that on and do that successfully. Okay, so Zelensky, uh, Mary Bowster, thank you very much to both of you for coming in.